Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Keisha King. In our last show, we took a tour of Iolani Palace with Wilson Moore, an attorney who has conducted tours there for more than a decade. After the tour, Chief Justice Rechtenwald of the Hawaii Supreme Court presented a proclamation recognizing Wilson for his years of service to the judiciary and the judicial evaluation panel. We were pleased to be there for the presentation of the proclamation and to meet those who came on the tour and attended this ceremony. And as you'll see, their comments were memorable. Wilson Seymour Jr. has had a distinguished legal career culminating as a name partner in one of Honolulu's most prominent law firms, Rush Moore. Whereas Mr. Moore has practiced extensively in Hawaii's courts and his extraordinary integrity and commitment to upholding the public's trust and confidence in the legal profession have never wavered. On September 27, 20, uh, 2000, after his retirement from the practice of law, Chief Justice Ronald Moon appointed him to the newly established Judicial Performance Review Panel to assist in evaluating judges through, through the judiciary's performance program. Since his appointment, Mr. Moore has generously given his time to prepare and personally meet with individual judges, drawing upon his vast experience and wisdom to provide guidance, enhance each judge's performance, and improve on their skills and techniques. And whereas, in addition to his vital service to the judiciary, Mr. Moore continually found ways to selflessly share his time and talent with Hawaii's community. One such way has been his service as a docent at Iolani Palace for 10 years Mr. Moore shared the rich, heritage, uh, the rich history of Iolani Palace, the only official residence of royalty in the United States, on these sacred grounds and the stories of the many people who made an impact on Hawaii's history. Through his personal guided tours and the light-hearted stories he shared of his own experiences, he provided a unique opportunity that took visitors back in time for a glimpse into the lives of Hawaii's last reigning monarch. So therefore, the Hawaii State Judiciary proclaims its sincere appreciation to Wilson Seymour Jr. for his service as a member of the Hawaii Bar, his dedication to improving the administration of justice in Hawaii, and his commitment to sharing and preserving Hawaii's history. His efforts have had a profound effect and will be appreciated for years to come. Willie, please accept this token of our appreciation and gratitude. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You much. Thank you very much. It's, I'm, I'm deeply honored. Sharing with my family, sharing with people in the bar with whom I have the greatest respect, this is a very, very high honor. I'm deeply appreciated. Thank you, thank you very, very much. So what do you think about today? Oh, this was fabulous. I'm so honored to be included on this tour, to have a chance to listen to uh, Mr. Moore give his special tour. You can tell that he just has such a passion and a depth of knowledge for this history. And it was just so special to be on this tour today. I'm so grateful. Oh, fantastic. I'm just so impressed. And he's put so much of his time and himself into being a part of the palace and 10 years. It's quite a while, yeah. Oh, thank you. Great. It's a special day. <laughs> what do you think about today? I, I'm very, very grateful that he's been honored. He has truly given so much. He, is, he loves Hawaii. He's loved his job. I remember him saying all those years ago, being a lawyer, was he never worked a day in his life because he loved going to work. Um, so, and I know he's made a difference in a lot of different ways into the community and I'm very, very proud of him and I'm very happy for him to have this honor. That's great. Yeah, I, I would add the same thing as well. She well overdue uh, for someone to speak up and, and acknowledge the many things he's done. Um, he's been tremendous as a father and someone to look up to and uh, he's been a mentor to too many people in this, in this town. and. Uh, he well deserved the things that he's done. Um, I, I wish I could follow his footsteps and be as he has, but uh, he's just an amazing person. I've only been in this family for about three years, and I'm already seeing the benefits. <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure having him as a father-in-law. I'm getting to know him a lot better, and he's actually showing us how to age gracefully with his ability, his um, his mental abilities, his physical abilities. So. When my husband and I retire, we are going to start picking up trash along Kalani Anole because we would like to live as long as him. 
Uh, it's just a privilege to spend some time with Mr. Moore. Um, he is a lion of our um, our profession, and uh, it's um, it's a great honor to be here today. And it's it's good to to hear him speak. You can you can imagine him in a courtroom, uh, given what we heard today. And I'm I'm just uh, I'm just honored to be here. I, I and to be honest with you, I wish I had uh, turned out a bigger section of the bar because this is a, this was a gem. Amazing. I mean, I, I hear these stories. He's my father-in-law, so I hear these stories all the time. And uh, from when he was a little kid and the things he has seen and the changes he's seen and been such an integral part of so many things in Hawaii for so long, it's incredible. It's incredible. And I will add, he also can occasionally shoot his age in golf. So forget that he's still doing this and that he's still picking up trash and everything else with the judicial. He still shoots 90 once in a while, which is unbelievable. We should all hope we still are as relevant as Willie is when we get to be, and hopefully get to be, 90 years old. 1973, I was working for the, a general contractor who did the renovation here. So I've been through every nook and cranny of this building um, when we were doing that renovation work. So it was really quite exciting for me to watch this place being torn apart and, and then have all these specialists put it back together again. So, oh yeah, I found a, gra a, a brass button that came off of uh, one of the uniforms of one of the, the guardsmen that we work here. Um, they had square nails, square shaped nails that they used at the time. Um, in some of the places where we had to clear out, they had a newspaper that's crammed into a, a crevice and you open up the newspaper and it's back in the 1900s. So really quite amazing. So anyway. That's great. That's a great story. Thank you. <laughs> This has been a great tour. Um, I've lived here all my life. This is the first time I've been on the second floor. Uh, and I was impressed with Mr. Moore's knowledge of Hawaiian history. It's really great. Thank you. Yeah, it was really educational. Yes. Did you know about the exam? It's 10 questions. It's uh, true, false. And there's a small subjective question at the end. It's about everything he said. Are you ready? <laughs> Did you bring your pencil? I'm <laughs> ready. Everything went perfect just the way we planned it, Jay. Everything was wonderful. We had a good time and, you know, Willie got honored, which was right. And uh, all the participants did something from the heart here, you know, a good spirit, you know. It, it was meant and intended to, to be positive and that's what happened. So sure, we all went well. It was lovely. Thank you for doing it, Mark, and congratulations on a job well done. Thank you very much, Jay. We're very proud of the Senior Council Division. We're very proud of Mr. Moore, and we're delighted to be here in attendance today. And it's uh, it's an example of um, the that people who have had long careers of, in the bar can go on and continue to contribute uh, during their entire lifetime. It's only a short walk across the street, so we're very fortunate to be neighbors of the Alani Palace. We treasure that relationship, and that's what makes today so special, to be able to come here and honor Willie Moore, who is an icon of the bar in Hawaii, who's uh, given so much to the judiciary since he retired, and has given so much here as a docent for the last decade. So I'm really honored to be able to come here and uh, just show our appreciation to Willie for all he's done. We're honored to be here too, CJ. Yeah, I appreciate everything Think Tech does to help highlight important stories in our community, important issues in our community. So thanks for being here today. I thought it was an amazing tour. And again, just to be able to honor Willie uh, is something, you know, the attorneys of his caliber are, are, are few and far between. And he's had such an impact, I think, on so many other attorneys in the bar, including me, who looked up to him during the time he practiced and uh, who've had the opportunity to meet him in other contexts. So I think his impact goes beyond just the cases he had. It really is an impact. Uh, on the professionalism of everyone he's met who see him as a role model. I'm totally overwhelmed at the occasion, but I have always said that I get as much out of volunteer work like being a docent at Iolani Palace as I get. Because um, to remember, um, to begin with, I'm a great history buff. I love Hawaii. I was born and raised here. My dad was a Bishop of State trustee. I have Hawaii in my blood. and uh, you. Know, but remembering all those dates and facts and putting them all in the right place is uh, doing me a great deal of good too. It helps my memory. So I really feel that um, uh, it's been a privilege uh, uh, to be a docent and I'll be always grateful for the opportunity to have done so. Wilson, you know they say that Eloni Palace is a treasure trove of Hawaiian history. Well, so are you. <laughs> Well, that's uh, very generous. I'm not so sure. <laughs> Thank you.
There's more. In the week following, we met Wilson in our studio for a talk show to discuss his work at the palace and his deep-seated interest in Hawaii history. Here are some clips from that show. Well, I was a lawyer for 40-some-odd uh, years and, uh, and casting around for something to give back to the community that had been so great to me. And um, one of our great friends is Alice Gill, which is an icon in this community. And Alice and my wife are great friends in the Garden Club. And Alice said, you know, Willie's got a good gift to gab. Why don't you get him to be into the training of the docent? So I looked into it. They accepted me. And I entered the training in um, the spring of 2009. And Zita Cup Choi is the marvelous educator up there at um, uh, Iolani Palace. And she not only... Uh, taught me uh, uh, an awful lot of what I needed to know, but infected me with such a desire to learn more about the monarch life in the palace that I did a lot of collateral reading. I probably did more than I should have because some of my <laughs> tours kind of run over, but uh, it was fun to do. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting because you brought to that your experience as a lawyer and a litigator, a researcher, and somebody who can talk to people, all those things came together, and now we have somebody who's willing in his retirement to be a docent. That's quite something. Those are a lot of skills. And I suppose, um, you know, you gave tours that were different than the, the customary kind of tour, am I right? I think every docent uh, brings to the palace their own experiences, their own uh, reflections on, um, on the life of Hawaii back in those days. And I think our job really is to um, not only show off the palace, which is a marvelous restoration, but to try and um, uh, tell people what it was like for the monarchs to live in those hallowed rooms with those wonderful artifacts. And, um, and, and in the process, teach a little bit about Hawaiian and monarch history. But um, it, it's, uh, it was more fun than work, I'll tell you that. Oh, sure. And it's the stories, the stories that, that bring it alive, that make it memorable not only for tourists who come around, but for local people who've never heard the stories before. You have, you have people asking you questions, people who know a lot about the palace and people maybe who don't know anything about the palace. How do you handle that? And, and, and uh, have those questions been a help in conducting these tours or do they sidetrack you? The questions usually belie the interest of the tour group. So then you can guide your presentation more toward that uh, question sure. because that help, that's helpful in that way. But let's talk about, you know, the tours that you give. Uh, you take us into a room, you talk about all the uh, icons and artifacts in the room, you talk about the people who are in the room, what they did in the room, even how they got along in the room, why, we were, why they were there, what they, you know, what they aspired to, and how they fit into Hawaii history. That's really something. And, uh, and your tour is just, you don't take a breath, do you? Well, I, I, you've got so much to cover, and uh, we're under a time limit. We're supposed to finish the two floors, the upper floors in Iolani Palace in 45 minutes. And uh, like I tell you, they, uh, I talk so much, they sometimes call me Waha Willie, which means mouth in Hawaiian, <laughs> as I tell too many stories. But um, I think my job, in addition to telling everybody about Iolani Palace and what it means to all the Hawaiian people, is to be entertaining and to... Um, uh, make the tourists uh, want to come back again. So uh, that's part of the, I think that's an important part of any tour. And you get to know, you get to know the, the royal family. You get to know the dynasties that were there. Uh, you get to know uh, how they thought, what they did, how they lived. This is very interesting stuff. So um, who's your favorite um, royal, royal person? Who's your favorite king? Do you have a favorite king? Well, I think uh, Kalakaua, of course, was the inhabitant of the palace the longest and left the greatest mark on it. Probably, that, probably the yeah. Kalakaua, but um, they're all interesting. Yeah. And Livio Kalani uh, spent some time being imprisoned in, in the palace uh, after the overthrow. 1895, uh, there was a rebellion, and as a result of that rebellion, she was arrested in January of 1895, and some say on. Uh, uh, less than convincing evidence, but at least that's what happened. And then in February, she suffered the indignity of her trial in her own throne room and then was um, house arrest in what the, is called the imprisonment room uh, for seven months and 20-some-odd 20, 20 days. 
And uh, then she was paroled uh, and had to stay on the islands for a while. And then within a year after the original trial, she was totally pardoned. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it's, it's clear the palace is a symbol of the kind of progress that Hawaii and, and the, the monarchy was making in the 19th century. Uh, they had come from a place which was not at all uh, sophisticated in, uh, say, the year 1800. And by, the, uh, by the time of the overthrow, they had achieved uh, world, world repute. They had achieved um, all kinds of tech. They were... They were they were uh, lit with electricity before the White House was, you said, yeah? 1880, that's right. Yeah. 1887 was the first year. 1886 was the first year the exterior was electrified. 1887, the interior of the palace was electrified four years before the White House. That's a very forward-thinking guy. Telephones they had. They had telephones. I think <laughs> there were at least 300 subscribers in Honolulu at 1883, and by golly, the king was certainly one. And what you saw on the wall in the King's in the library was uh, the original phone. I think the original one is in Bishop Museum, but this is an identical copy. Yeah, extraordinary how how Hawaii was you know was so progressive through that whole century, and it's all reflected in the palace. If you look at the things you were showing us, you realize that they were making really incredible progress. They were globally minded, globally aware, um, and I can understand why the people admired them. Um, they, they were they were leaders in, in a in a in a community that respected leaders, um, but that was also current uh, in, you know, in the global scene. If I were um, an ordinary citizen in that period, I would have been proud of them. I would have admired them, and I would have been loyal to them. Well, I think that yeah, I think that's very true. Remember, uh, Hawaii was very literate back in those days. Yes, uh, thanks to the missionaries and converting an oral language to a, uh, a written language. In the late 1800s, uh, Hawaii is said to have been the most literate nation in the world. So they had a knowledge of the outside world. And of course, uh, in a strategic location in the middle of the Pacific, they had traders from all over the world. So they had um, interests in, from the Russians and the French and the English and the Americans primarily traded there. So they had uh, quite a bit of knowledge of the, of the world. Of, yeah. So if you, and there were so many things tragically uh, that were taken and sold after the overthrow. It was dismembered uh, in many ways, and luckily, uh, the friends of the palace and other people who were friends of the palace managed to get a lot of that back. But it's not all back yet. We've gotten forty to fifty percent of the uh, contents back, and you're right. Uh, uh, Queen Kapiolani's executors, Liliokalani's executors, and the government sold the contents off, much of the contents anyway, and um, people would buy and then scatter to the four winds. Mm. And, uh, but uh, we have um, a, a little bit of a treasury that we, uh, you can use to buy things up. For instance, if we see something on, on Sotheby's that uh, mm. s uh, claims to be a artifact from Iolani Palace and it bumps the price because of it, we will do our investigation, or the curators do, and if it is, in, in fact, ours, we'll see if we have enough money in the kitty to buy it. And if we don't, we'll walk downtown and suggest to one of the businessmen that they could make a contribution <laughs> to Iolani Palace. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how we've gotten 40 to 50 percent of the things back. If you want to see what happened, if you want to be there and be part of it somehow, you should go to Iolani Palace. But I, I want to offer you this last, um, you know, opportunity um, in our show to, to address the people, uh, to tell them what you would like them to remember about the palace and uh, what you think they ought to do about preserving the palace and visiting the palace. There's camera four. Well, I think the palace is uh, a, a blessing for all the people. It, it reminds people of a bygone day, yes, but of a rich history that the Hawaiians have. And... Uh, it was a real privilege for me to be a part of it for 10 years. Um, I felt that I gave back as much as I, I got back as much as I gave. Um, you can't uh, teach all that and, and have that interaction with people without uh, a lot of it rubbing off on you. And I, I would certainly encourage people to uh, take their retirement and, uh, and do something like that because it's a, it's a blessing and a lot of fun too. Thanks to Mark Schlaub for organizing the tour and the ceremony. 
Thanks to Wilson Moore for a great tour and for coming to our studio for the talk show. If you want to know more about Iolani Palace, check out iolanipalace.org. If you want to know more about the Hawaii State Judiciary, see courts.state.hi.us. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you miss a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on ThinkTechHawaii.com and YouTube and on our free iPhone and Android apps. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience or participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or comment, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
we'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Okay, Keisha, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Keisha does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it including the study of our unique history in Hawaii and the recognition of those who have provided lifelong service to our community. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important ThinkTech episode. I'm Keisha King. And I'm Jay Fidel. Aloha, everyone.